Well, he was still up there last night. Mr. Mouse. He's up round my chimney. Scrap, 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 scrap. I haven't got him yet. It's gonna happen. Morning world, welcome to Saturday, 4th of December, 2021. You guys are all right. Everybody's happy. And still got plenty of grub. I know the cows are because I fed them last thing last night. Okay, so one or two people have asked about head trimming and am, am I going to do any head trimming this year well the intention is still yes if I get the opportunity I will but it got to the point where uh, this is the time of year where you get a lot of migratory birds come into the country and it's already been left late but if I reckon if I leave it another couple of weeks all the hedge fruit will be gone so basically we've given the birds the chance to take the fruit from the hedges, spread the seeds, blah, 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 do the natural thing. And it's nice, if you can, occasionally, to give the birds that chance. A couple of weeks ago, a lot of our hedges were laden. Now it's just a bit left. Right. I do need to get in there and have a clean out in there. I'll let them finish breakfast first. <laughs> so pretty much, Everything's gone. So all the blackberries are gone. All the hallberries and the hawthorn. One or two. But they look a bit wrinkly, so not very appetizing. They're gone. Uh, there is very little in the way of hedge food left in here. I reckon we could more or less crack on with the hedge cutting. The only thing that's going to stop me for a minute is, and it's the same thing that could actually prevent me from doing it at all, we've had a couple of days of quite heavy rain. Not prolonged, um, but the rain's been quite heavy, and in between the heavy showers it's just been damp, drizzly stuff. So the ground, although down here, here we are pretty firm. I wouldn't mind travelling on there. I wouldn't want to go up and down it too many times. Um, so I think whatever happens with hedge trimming, it's not going to be a pristine, real tidy job. It's going to be a once over, get the worst of it off, get this year's growth off of it. And then, you know, another year when we have better weather or I do it earlier or later or it's frosty or something, I can always do a tidy job then. But the thing is, you can get very, very fussy with your hedge trimming and get it beautiful spot on but especially when you've got a small machine like mine it's only a one meter um, head um, I have to travel up and down the same spot a number of times just to do what we call a rough cut and that's all adding compaction and damage to the turf stuff you want to avoid really so yeah nice to have the hedges perfect ground is really a bit more important. A couple of little berries left up there. I don't know if the camera's going to pick them up, but right on the branch tips, there's a couple of two, well, it's probably 40 or 50 whole berries left on that tree. We're more or less done. Okay, plenty of cones on the pines. Um, we don't have an awful lot of beasties locally that eat pine cones but the way I look at it is if we had some crossbills or something migrating or up and down through I've got somewhere from the stop for a lunch break I like a few pines I'm going to plant some more pines okay right that's really all this was just to come down and have a look this hedge this side 
it's the most exposed to the weather potentially there's a bit more um, food on the other side but in saying that because the other side is more protected from the weather quite like the bird stripped that bit first so I could be completely talking out of my backside again yeah a few bearers up there but I reckon 99% of the hedge food has now been consumed perhaps that's why the moisture in the house now they've eaten all of this out here they've come in for a bit of warmth don't blame them I just wish they'd do it quietly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Timmy is still carrying that front left foot he might have to have some more blue spray I don't know what he's done to it we thought he twisted it to begin with because there was no swelling and no heat but um, we might have to just get them in again and have a closer look at that but he's definitely he's definitely carrying it not much running down there today barely a dribble but it is running this is um, this tree here is an old pollard ash and if you look at it there's kind of not really much to it um, my grandfather pollarded this then when my father had the farm he didn't pollard it in his, his time and about 10 years ago we did a reduction rather than a full pollard but um, these old ash trees like this I'm kind of hoping he's going to survive ash dieback because the habitat value of this I mean he's completely hollow in the bowl if you could get in there you could probably stand up inside him but that thing is home to so many beasties and creatures shelter from the weather and even a food source for some of them but uh, every year we have a family of lip owls because the crane at the top is also hollow Every year we have a, um, a nest full of lip owls breeding in there. And we, I love to see them. So we used to go up there as kids, climb up there, and um, I know it's naughty and you shouldn't do it, but we were kids then, this is like 40 odd years ago. We used to go up there and get the owlets out because they were always covered in ticks. Um, and I'd spend, well, I won't say hours, but a long time just picking ticks out of the owl chicks so um, they didn't appreciate it but it certainly helped them out because I mean when I say covered in ticks I mean covered in ticks little blood suckers so I reckon we saved quite a few owlets from anemia would that be what it would be because those ticks they'd be sucking it because the ticks would suck blood drop off, digest it, then get back on again. Ah, two little things. Right. Okay. Hello, girls. Hello, Roger. How are we all looking today? Oh, ah, uh, Roger's looking playful. See that look on his face? See him? He's definitely looking playful. Hello, mate. You alright? Hello, Roger. Right. Behave. No work at I've got no bread for you. Behave. No. 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 Pack it in. The ram starts backing up. Follow him stay in his face because the second he gets six seven foot away you just go into launch mode and you come forward a lot faster than he went backwards you're lame as well well maybe it was you I saw it was Timmy that was lame on his front left now it's one of the U's 
mirrors to me. It should be easy to spot because in his belly, same as the ram, he's, he's got a little um there's an extra bit. Oh Timmy, where art thou? There he is. And he is still carrying that foot. Oh. Got two to sort out. He might have to have an injection this time. I try to avoid sticking needles in sheep and animals if I can. But sometimes you just got to give them that extra bit of help. So. Right. Other than too lame. <laughs> hole there, other than too lame, they don't look too bad. I get the distinct feeling they want to go through there though, they're bored out here. We'll have to start feeding them soon, it's not yet, um, another week, 10 days perhaps, and then we'll look at perhaps putting a bale out here for them, or maybe even a bale at the top, bring them back up there where I can keep an eye on better. Right, okay, so far, so far. that's the morning round. Cattle are all right, sheep are all right, Tim is still lame. One of the users carrying a foot a bit as well. Some work to be done. Thing is, it's wet, and this time of year, any weakness in their feet, and they'll pick it up because it's wet. Could I put them indoors? Yep, I could. Would they like it? Absolutely not. They'd be miserable as sin. They're far better off out here. So, so what happened? So he lifted up the bed, and there was a mouse in there. Yeah, because he thought he was like, oh, that sounded really loud. Let's look under the bed. Yeah. And it's obviously it's been, the, the thing's been picking up the ripping up the carpet. Right. Okay. So everyone was like, oh, look and see if like it's under the bed because that's where it sounded like it was coming from. Lifted it up, and this thing shot out. Okay. Did he get? A, what colour was it? What colour was it? Brown. What, a dark like a brown light or a brown light brown? brown. Yes, yeah, wood mouse. Light brown or dark brown, Henry? Like a chestnutty brown. To be fair on it, I think he just he was being an absolute pussy, saw the size of it and ran away. <laughs> <laughs> There's no, no one making a farmer out of him, is there? <laughs> well, he reckons it's huge, but I said, I said mice and rats and all of those are rodents are very similar to like a ferret in the fact of when, you know, when they scrunch themselves up, they do look huge. <coughs> well, like I said, a wood mouse is at least is about three, three times the size of a house mouse. A wood mouse is about three times the size of a house mouse. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, so I was telling you the other night, it's bigger. So, but it, it's the size... It, it, it's, they've got a white tummy. You, yes. They had a white ass. Yes. Yeah, wood mouse. Wood mouse. Yeah. If it was a rat, there'd be, you wouldn't see any white on it. <laughs> it was a giant rat. No, they are quite big. So I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people would mistake a wood mouse for a young rat. <laughs> I know, it's like Ninja Turtles. Over here. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so yeah. So, so, so put a trap in there. So, so it's been nicking the dog food and storing it under the bed. Yeah, but the thing is, though, this morning we found rat poo. Oh, we found poo on the stairs. He's been chewing out of the front door, yeah. skirting as well. Yeah, you're infested. <sighs> infested. We we've, we've got one or two in the house. The Which thing I'm... is, though, right? All of the downstairs booms were shut. Yeah. Okay. So. They get through a very small hole, mind. As long as he, if he can get his head through a hole or something, he'll get his whole body through there. Well, how big is his head? What, like a, like a tempty diameter? Or? So, end of your middle finger. End of my little finger. Middle, middle finger. Oh, no, you actually, you've got smaller fingers. So, um, say my it. thumb? Yeah, so say the end of your thumb. If you can get your thumb in somewhere, then um, he, can get in, he can get in there. Oh, my God. 
makes you out of it. Hey. And me. You can get for a hole that big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they can squeeze through very it. small holes. Well, the thing is though, there was, I didn't let Flossie's food stay, uh, like, I got Meg to go and finish it off. Yeah, don't leave, don't leave huh? unfinished food around. But, and put everything in sealed containers. Yeah, well, all the dog food is in sealed containers now. Yes. Yeah. Really? Down. So, okay. Um, well, oh, like, like I say, you now, you now know where to put the, um, where to put the traps and catch him. I know, but I've got a really nice jacket underneath there and there's poo all over it. <laughs> Do you know why that is? It's because you're dirty. 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 I didn't go, come live in our house, that's what I really you're want, dirty. shit everywhere. <laughs> right, okay. So. How are you feeling this morning anyway? Yeah, yeah, I felt a lot better after coming home and doing what I said I was going to do. <laughs> you did a massive Yeah, I, I did, yes, it was. <laughs> I did, yes, yes. Yeah, I, I felt a lot better for that. Um, but yeah, no, I'm fine, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's no effort at all, I just sat there and I know, it's just like, you know. Contemplated well, life for two it, seconds. As long as it wasn't like icky poo. Oh no, no, no. Yeah, it was, a very, it was a very nice curry. Thank you very much indeed. Thoroughly enjoyed oh, it. Thank you. <laughs> but when, but once, once, uh, once the signal was sent and it's like, I got to go now. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as soon as you left, everyone went, all this talk about poo is maybe me. <laughs> well, I think he did because I was sure he, I was sure he ripped out a couple of quiet ones while I was sat there. It was either him or the dog. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you needed to put because you kept sending a little quiet ones out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nearly lost me curry on one of them. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, yeah, sometimes when he farts, it's bad. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. It's, bad. it's, it's icky. beer, isn't it? So. Right, I'm going to finish feeding the birds. Um, so, Timmy is still lame. Yeah. Uh, one of the ewes is also a bit lame on her front left as well. So, as and when you've got time, um, we'll come up, we'll get these lambs in, we'll worm them. And if we can get the the using the ram in, we'll um, mm. we'll have a look at their feet. Okay, no problem. It right. might not be today. That's all right. Sorry, um, this needs to be doing fairly soon though, because they want doing. It needs it needs doing. It's not, ur not it's not urgent. I mean, they're all they're all happy enough. It's just it's just one of those jobs that needs doing. Yeah. I mean, it is, soon, it is sooner the better, but it's not urgent. Yeah. Well, right. will you, you have to deal with me. your mouse first. <laughs> yeah, he was like, we've got to sort this shit out there. <laughs> um, well, I wanted to take, take everything out of the bed, out of the bed, but he was like, no, leave it the way it is. Yeah, because they're... Uh, Gaps the fucker. Do you yeah. reckon it's just one still? Uh, no, there's probably two or three in there now, it's about... He reckons there's probably about two or three with a mouth mess we keep finding. Yeah. Henry's face, motherfucker! <laughs> right, okay, I'll let you deal with that, so, but yeah, they need, they need sorting out. But if you could trap them, it'd be better than, because if they're getting into your bedding, and into your clothes, you're better off trapping them than poisoning them, because you do not want to find a dead mouse in your best dress. Oh, it's not, it's just, it's just our bedding in spare mattresses underneath that. Yeah, no, but you don't want to, you don't, you don't want to have a dead mouse on your pillowcase, do you? It doesn't bother me that much. I'll just get rid of the mouse and I'll wash the pillowcase. Pillowcase. Right. Like a little shroud, isn't it? Little mouse shroud. I'm, I'm not a pussy. Oh, alright then. <laughs> mouse, mouse and rabbits don't, you know, all that kind of stuff. Doesn't doesn't bother me. I'm not all a bit squeamish. And oh. Ran out of the spare room. Did you scream like a girl? Yeah. Proper <laughs> <laughs> <Couple of> like. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. On that note. Henry just takes me, Henry just looks at me and says, well, when we catch it, you can still deal with it. <laughs> Alright, okay. Mind. I'll enjoy editing that bit. No, we're not making a hat out of it, Henry. You're weirdo. <laughs> Davy Crockett with a mouse hat on. <laughs> you can make a dick hat. Because it's not big enough for a hat, hat, is it? trophy. Eh? Little. It was stuffed Henry's and mounted. He wants a mouse, a mouse with antlers or something on the mantelpiece now. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm gonna go now. I'll, I'll, I'll see you later. Thank you for cheering me up. No Not that I needed cheering up, but it was thank you. <laughs> okay then. All right, bye. Bye bye. Love you loads. Bye bye. <laughs>
<sighs> yeah, it's not just me that's suffering with a mouse. Abby's got the same problem. But uh, according to the neighbour, um, the predecessors in their house also had a problem with mice. Anyway, the reason I came in here wasn't to talk about mice and stuff like that. Um, I had, um, I think it was a, I think it was a lady commented on one of the last videos I did regarding to the birds and the poultry pen and shutting them in and stuff like that. And it was something like, oh, why don't you put a couple of sheets of tin down for the birds to get shelter out of the weather? I, I presume she's assuming that the pen is all open to the weather and they've got no shelter. Well, just so I can put your mind at rest. Um, there is plenty of shelter in here. So that is all bone dry in there. So they've got nest boxes and sh shelter, including another old pig hut out there. So there's plenty of room and space for them to get out of the weather. And there's a couple of old chicken houses there, which are kind of past their best but as far as shelter is concerned don't worry about the birds they've got plenty of shelter i just don't have anywhere where i can shut them in that the little birds can't get to um, i think the idea is with the rules is they got to be shut in and completely segregated from any wild birds that's not just crows and magpies and um, pigeons to that. that's down to like sparrows we don't have that facility here because when we built this there was no such thing as bird flu or if it was it was kind of not worried about so we've got to rethink the poultry pen which I'm not going to do this year I've got plenty on my plate to do this year but I've got a funny feeling that a lot of this in the next year or so is going to disappear we'd like to improve the view from the granny flat anyway so that house there will go this pen here will go. We'll probably move everything down, downhill a bit. So put everything down there, possibly cut down the numbers of birds we have as well. Um, like I said before, a lot of these are rescue, rescue birds, or they've been sort of, people around me have said, we're moving, we're retiring, can you take our geese? So I haven't bought a goose in decades. So maybe as they've sort of, die out and diminish we won't replace any more we won't take any more on we'll just keep a few around i like to have a few around but uh yeah things like bird flu for just a couple of birds can make life really awkward you lot can have that it's in big bits because <coughs> if Mr. Crow or Magpie does come down, he can't fly off with that. So, unless he's going to try and wrestle it off one of the geese. Good luck with that. Okay, so we have reference to another video, or maybe even the same one, where I um, was umming and an about whether I do any recording with this camera at Mum's funeral. Um, the decision is I'm not. Uh, I won't be doing that. Uh, we are webcasting the funeral to family and friends who are abroad or in the country and can't make it for whatever reason. Uh, that will be a private webcast. We won't be giving anybody other than family and friends the key and the code for that. Um, we'll have a hard copy, so I don't need to record it because they are. So, so yes, I'm not going to be recording the um, the funeral because there's a webcast there. I'm going to have a, a hard copy of that, so I'll have something to keep, which I can share with family if they want. But yeah, the um, the funeral's going to stay private. Okay, so Granny Flat, we are definitely getting there. So I think next weekend the aircon units will be put on here. Um, most of the kitchen is kind of in kitchen kitchenette uh, we've got to drill a hole in the wall for the drain for the sink uh, we've still got lights to go up outside here which will light up the, of the house for her no jumpy uppy but yes we are definitely getting there all right once all right once 
once always ends up being 20 times. So we are genuinely, really, really pleased with the results of this. David, Andy, and all the other guys, Jensen, uh, Sean, I um, can't remember who came from Windowcraft, or the Windowcraft, everybody who's done any work on this project. It's all been top notch. It's all been spot on. And that's not because I've been looking over their shoulders and, and watching them all the time. It's just that's the way they do stuff. They do it neat and they do it right. Okay, this has got to be tidied up. But we've got a path to come all around here. I think the idea is this we're going to put a paved path in the middle and then we're going to put like a French drainage gravel on both sides. Just just because that's the way we're going to do it. With a small patio out here. I'll tell you what, you come around that corner, you do not feel the wind. Right, I've got three quarters of an hour. We're going to do some sheep in a bit. I, no, I don't want to throw it again. All right, once. No, that's twice, isn't it? Hmm, that's a parcel. That's heavy. Okay, right, excuse the mess on the table. That's our toys for Tuesday. That's last week's. That's foot warmer thingy. I've got a couple of parcels to go through and a couple of thank yous to do. So actually, while I'm in here, I'll do that now. But I won't open that one first. Hello, biscuit. Okay, so just before I open that one, um, I have, in the last week, been sent a whole load of GoPro mounts. These are all aluminium um, and more mounts and more mounts and including this lot here that came from uh, one of our Martins actually that that clip and magnetic mount has been my go-to everything for the last 10 videos at least brilliant piece of kit that is so Anyway, um, thank you to um, whoever sent all these in. These are brilliant. So these are, these can be permanently mounted on things, literally screwed down. So if I've got something where I really, really, really don't want the camera to come off, I can fix these things properly. So there's a few places I could use those. Right, so that's that. Any more in there? I think that was all of them. So I don't know. We haven't opened it yet. They're going to open it now. Um, that's, that's heavy, that one. You put the microphone in. Yeah, I know it's for. Yeah, put it around your neck. Pardon? Get that around your neck. Some would definitely have some fun at her neck, though. Right, okay, so um, this came uh, a couple of days ago. You don't keep the letters in there. Oh, isn't it? Oh, I'll put the letter all back in here. So this was sent in by someone whose name I'll read it in a second. And it's literally just a little. Mem Thank you. Came from. Uh, where's his name? From. Can we share? I've got the glasses on. Where did you say his name? Robin. Rob. I can't start saying that. It looks like Robin, and I can't say that surname. I would. Uh, yeah, I would. I wouldn't do it justice if you know what okay. I mean. Robin. Anyway, Robin. Yes, I did Hereford. get it. Robin from Hereford. Robin from Hereford. Thank you very much, Robin from Hereford. This is just a little memory candle thingy. Mrs. Peekings is lovely. I um, am beautiful. Uh, we're going to put a, a photograph of Mum in there, and yes, it's a little memory. A candle. Eh? A little candle memory thingy, so. Very, okay. very kind. I'm going to go back in there. At the moment, it's safe in the box. Yes, it's safe in the box. That. That's almost out of battery, so I'd better make this quick. Because that's the batteries on the GoPro has got a tendency to just suddenly go. I've noticed that on a lot of people's um, yeah. YouTube's. Just, just goes. So. Does it matter that it was? Well, it's not that cold out there, is it? Right, I'm not cutting towards myself. This is just a figment of your imagination. Is um, Abby coming to help you? Yes. Yeah. Right, okay. They found the mouse nest under the bed. Oh, like old times. Oh, peanuts. Oh, there, there was a mention of this. 
I told Tony to rob me, thought we should have some sandwiches in the room in the time we Roy Roasters. Joe, you know, I looked at them this morning when I was shopping, I thought yeah. I won't buy any at the moment. Yeah, so there's two packets of Roy Roasted. I like Roy Roasted peanuts, and... Ooh. Nut mix, fruit and yeah. nut. Yeah, it's a fruit and nut mix. You might like that. You already tell you fruity stuff, are not you? Right, well, um, I won't mention any names who sent them because... Is it on the label? Sorry? No, I think I think they want to stay incognito. Okay. So, um, yeah, thank you very much indeed. Right, okay, so that's that. That'll keep me nutty. I've got to change the battery in that. Cup of tea. Put the kettle on. Oh, water. Thank you. 